class. Welcome back again. Today's lesson is about momentum and this is class by Raj teaching for physics from 6 semester 1. For today's lesson is to state the principle of conservation of momentum and verify the principle and applying the principle of conservation of momentum in solving questions and remembering back what is impulse and solving problems involving impulse. This concept that we're going to learn today is not something new. It is something that you have studied in your form 4. Momentum. Symbol P. I know when you studied in your form 4, you know that P is equals to mv, where m is the mass and v is the velocity. But to go more definition as it is, it's also called as the mass in motion. You see, all objects have mass. So if an object is moving, then we can say the mass is moving or the mass is in motion. The amount of momentum that an object has is dependent upon two variables. The first one is how much stuff is moving and how, stuff, how fast the stuff is moving. Momentum depends upon the variable of mass and velocity. In terms of equation, the momentum, everybody knows, is equal to the mass of the object times the velocity of the object. Momentum is the motion contained in a body. Now, principle of conservation of momentum. Now, principle of conservation of momentum, of linear momentum. So, if you see the word here, it's talking about linear momentum. Now, class, do you know linear momentum are like for linear motion? We also have another momentum, which is a rotational momentum in the subject of rotational, which has already taken out from your syllabus. Now, what does the principle of conservation of linear momentum say? That for a closed system. Now, what is a closed system class? A closed system is a system where there is no external force that acts. So, when there is a system as such, then the principle says that the total linear momentum is constant. That means it's conserved. Let's look at uh, page 61 class, linear momentum and its conservation. Today's learning outcome, you're going to state the principle of conservation of momentum and verify the principle using Newton's law of motion. Okay, the momentum of a body of mass M. I think everybody are familiar with momentum. Okay, momentum. All right, a symbol is small p. Okay, it's a body of mass m moving with a velocity v. So, it's a vector quantity. Okay, momentum is what? It's a vector quantity. That means it has a magnitude and direction to take note of. Okay, and the direction of the momentum is its direction is in the direction of the velocity. Okay, so that's how the direction of momentum is known, where the direction is in the direction of the velocity. Okay, for a system that consists of a number of bodies, the total momentum of the system is the vector sum of the momenta of the various body. Okay, all right. Now, what does the principle of conservation of linear momentum say? Now, why are we saying the word linear momentum? Linear momentum means we are taking consideration of an object, momentum of an object that is in the linear motion, that is moving in a straight line. Okay, that is moving in the straight line. Because when if you study, you go forth and study, we also, which is already taken out of your syllabus, but we also have momentum for rotational motion and so on. But here is concentrating on the word linear momentum. That means momentum of an object that is performed in linear motion. States that for a closed system. Now, what is a closed system? A closed system means a system where there is no external force x okay so for a closed system means there is no external force x on the system okay so if i say this is a body so the linear momentum for a closed system that means no external force x on this body the total linear momentum is constant the p is constant p is constant okay now, we want to verify the principle of conservation of momentum 
by using uh, by verify it by uh, applying newton law of motion okay let's look at newton first law of motion okay the principle of conservation of linear momentum is consistent with newton first law of motion okay now newton first law of motion can be divided into two sections Okay, so if I go back to our revision here, Newton's first law of motion can be divided into two sections. The first section is, an object that is at rest will remain at rest. This is the first section, number one. Okay, number two, a body that is moving will continue to move with a constant velocity. Okay, so there's two Okay, there's two situations here. One is at rest and one it is moving. And even if it is moving, it is moving with a constant velocity. Now, what does constant velocity tells you, class? Constant velocity tells you that there is no acceleration. Acceleration is zero. Okay, that's what constant velocity speaks about. So, when we want to analyze this situation... Okay, we want to analyze this situation. We divide it into the two sections. One, we are talking about the body which is at rest. It is a state of rest. Okay. Okay. All right. Another one, we are talking about body which is in motion. It's motion with constant velocity. Okay. So, we are talking about these two situations. Constant velocity. Alright, so if I have a body which is at rest, okay, the body which is at rest, the body will continue to be at rest, okay, because if the body is at rest, it's not acted by an external force. That means if it is at rest, that means it is not acted by an external force. So when it's not acted by an external force, that means it is called as a closed system. And when it's closed system, the total linear momentum is constant. Okay, so that's why it says total linear momentum is constant. Why? Because in this body which is at rest, P equals to mv, v is zero, so the momentum is zero. So the momentum remains zero. Okay, now let's look at the second one. A body that is moving, continue, it is moving with a constant velocity. Now we have a body that is moving. Okay, it's moving. Okay, and the momentum of the body is P equals to mv. Okay, so before it was moving. After, it is still moving with a constant velocity. Okay, so that means there is no external force on it. No external force on it means it's a closed system. When it is a closed system, the conservation says the total linear momentum is constant. So therefore, if it is, if it is constant, the P equals to mv is still the same. So it is constant. So the momentum is constant. Its momentum remain constant. Hence, linear momentum is conserved. So we verify principle of conservation by using Newton law okay all right so that is number four okay let's look at number five all right now the principle of conservation of linear momentum can be deduced from newton's second law of motion okay so we have here f equals to d p over d t now P is total momentum. DP is change of momentum. Okay, the changes of momentum. Alright, so for a closed system, for a closed system, F is equals to 0. So therefore, DP over DT is equals to 0. So, from there, we can know that the P is equals to 0 and it is constant. Okay. So, we can say that the total momentum is constant. So, from here, the keyword here, closed system. Closed system and the keyword here is 
total momentum is constant so therefore which is the principle of conservation of linear momentum why because in principle of conservation of linear momentum it is says closed system and total linear momentum is constant so that is how we can deduce uh, to principle of conservation of linear momentum from Newton's second law of motion. Okay, now we can also use Newton's second law and third law and we can also deduce the momentum is conserved in a collision. Okay, in a collision. Look at how we can use Newton's uh, law of motion to verify the principle of conservation of momentum okay we are going to use newton's second law and newton's third law all right so we have here three situation before collision during collision and after collision we have two object here one is ma one is uh, mb okay two bodies ma and mb ma is moving with the uh, initial velocity ua so I can say the momentum, momentum of M A momentum of A is M A U A. Momentum of B is M B U B before collision then i realize after collision this happens during collision then i realize after collision the moment the velocity changes so the momentum of a so since the velocity changes so the momentum also changes the momentum of a is m a b a and then the momentum of b is m b v b okay all right so i'm going just going to um, highlight here momentum m a m b u b m a m b v b okay all right so let's look what happens during collision Okay, during collision, all right, when both of them collide each other, there is an external force that is exerted between them. Because according to Newton's third law, okay, Newton's third law, okay, so during collision, there is an external force that acts between them and this force are action and reaction equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so when i draw the forces when they collide each other a will exert a force on b which we call this as f a and b will exert a force on a which is f b and according to newton third law f a is equals to negative f b okay which is force f a is force of a on b f b is force of b on a okay now this force is an external force this force is what is an external force this external force will cause a change will cause a change on the momentum of the body okay it will cause a change on the momentum of the body so let's see f a okay so i'm going to draw a figure of b okay i'm going to draw here this is B and F A is exerted on B. 
So before collision, the momentum of B was MBUB. When the force exerted on B during collision, the momentum of B changes to MBVB. So the momentum change of momentum okay the change of momentum is mbvb minus with mbub okay and according to newton's second law newton Second law, okay, the rate of change of momentum is equals to the resultant force, okay. According to Newton's second law, the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the resultant force on it. So, we can say Fa... Okay, I'm going to use a red pen. Fa is equals to MBVB minus MBUB over delta T. Okay, alright. Now, let's look at A. This is A. And the force that is exerted on A during collision is FB. So, before collision, the momentum of A was MAUA. After collision, the momentum of A is MABA. Okay? So, the change of momentum is MAVA minus MAUA. And according to Newton's second law, B, which is the external force that causes the change of the momentum, is equals to M A B A minus M A U A over delta T. Okay, all right. Now what we do? We already know F B. And we already know Fa. Now we look at this concept here. Fa equals to negative Fb. So we substitute this to inside here. We get MBVB minus MBUB over delta T equals to negative MA. V A minus M A U A over delta T. Okay, then what do we have? We cancel the delta T. We get M B V B minus M B U B. We get negative M A. V A plus M A U A. Then we bring forward, we times and bring forward, we get M A V A plus M B V B equals to M A 
U A plus M B U B. And I think you people are very very familiar with this kind of this formula, okay? Because you have studied in your form five or form four. Okay, now what this formula teaches us? The formula teaches us, you see, M A V A plus M B V B, M A V A plus M B V B is equals to M A U A plus M B U B. So the momentum here, the total momentum here is equals to the total momentum here. So from this, I can deduce that, okay. I can deduce that the total momentum total momentum after collision is equals to the total momentum before collision so sometimes some book you will see they will write the word total linear momentum why they say the word total linear momentum is because it's a momentum which is linear motion okay we also have rotational momentum but this one is linear means it's linear motion moving in a straight line so hence we can say based on this total momentum after collision is equal to total momentum before collision we can say that linear momentum is conserved in a collision so that verify the principle of conservation of momentum because principle of com conservation of momentum says linear momentum states that for a closed system the total linear momentum is constant okay total linear momentum is constant so you want to say momentum also can you can say linear momentum also can linear momentum means linear motion moving in a straight line okay all right so that is how we verify principle using Newton law of motion by using the third law and the second law. In classical mechanics, impulse is the integral of a force over the time interval t for which it acts. Since force is a vector quantity, impulse is also a vector quantity. Impulse. impulse is actually it quantifies the overall effect of a force acting over time okay impulse all right so impulse is the change in momentum of a body due to the action of a force okay due to the action of a force so it's the overall effect of a force acting over a time period okay now according to newton's second law of motion class we know f is equals to d m v over d t okay now we bring f there f d t equals to d m v so if the force and the mass are constant okay if the if the force and the mass m are constant okay force f and the mass m are constant then what happens is we integrate f dt equals to m we integrate u v d v Okay, alright, 
okay so this is called as the impulse of the force which is equals to this but if the force is constant then the impulse is equals to f t where f t is equals to m v minus m u okay and then if you draw a diagram you draw a graph so the area under the graph will represent the impulse okay will represent the impulse elastic and inelastic collision in this topic which is elastic and inelastic collision or we can say non elastic collision we need to distinguish between elastic and inelastic collision that is our learning outcome a perfectly elastic collision is defined as one which there is no loss of kinetic energy momentum is conserved collision involve bouncing object have different velocities after collision if we look at the examples here if we look at the examples here we have this car which is m a u a mass is m a initial velocity is u a and it collide with this car which mass is m b and initial velocity is u b when collision happens what happens is this two object have different velocities after collision which both of this car is moving with the velocity of va and vb after a collision whereas an inelastic collision there is a loss in kinetic energy a inelastic collision in one in which part of the kinetic energy is changed to some other form of energy in the collision but the momentum is conserved and the collision involves sticking an object have the same velocity after collision so if you look at this diagram before collision this car is moving with n which has a mass m and initial velocity u a and it collide with this car which is mass m b and initial velocity u b and after the collision after the collision is involved sticking and is moving with the same velocity after the collision 